Hello, I'm Lugatorix, and today we are doing something that's a little bit different. We are actually going to play the prologue of Rome Total War. So, I've actually never played the prologue of Rome Total War before. I, I don't think I have, I don't remember playing it anyway. And I'm a relatively experienced player, so this was, in fact, this was suggested by someone. I'll have a quick look now who it was. This was suggested by just me in the comments of a video a while back. So thank you very much for suggesting this. And do you know what? I think it's actually a pretty good idea because even if you're an experienced player, sometimes it's good to go back to the basics and maybe there's something I've missed out at the beginning that's really basic that I, I don't know. There, there probably is knowing me something very basic. I'm very bad at reading instructions and stuff like that. So this is probably evidence of that. So anyway, let's just get along with the prologue. I think this would be good, a bit of good fun actually. It's the tutorial, by the way, if you don't really know what the prologue is. I think it's the tutorial. Okay, so here we are. And it seems like you're forced to play as the House of Julia. My favourite of the Roman factions is the Scipii, but it looks like we're playing as the House of the Julia. There's a bit of a description here, which I can't honestly be bothered to read, but here it is. So you can pause it if you want to read it. That is literally it. And... It says become the supreme leader of Rome and control at least 50 provinces. Well, we won't do that today, but we will do the intro. So let's start the campaign. And yeah, this will be a bit of good fun. The year is 329 BC. Italy. Warring city-states vie for power and superiority over their neighbours. and people of Rome control the Latin states, but enemies surround them. The Republic stands at a crossroads in history. Romans, senators, friends. Latium is firmly under the rule of the Senate and people of Rome. The Latin people are now one. Not since noble Brutus drove out the last king have we known such a glorious day. But now, my friends, in this hour of glory, we must be on our guard. To the south, treacherous Greeks and Samnites block our trade. Tarquinii groans beneath the tyrant's heel. That tyrant threatens Rome. Will we abandon Tarquinii? And now barbarians raid from the north, burning and pillaging Roman lands. Shall we let danger fester and grow? Or will we act as Romans with courage and dignity? Remember, we are the sons of Mars. As Senate leader, I call upon tribunes Gaius Julius and Decius Brutus to smash the Gauls and relieve Tarquinii. All those in favor say aye. Well, that was cool. That was a different intro. I don't think I've seen that before. That was actually a lot better than the other intros that I've seen before. No mention of the Scipii there, unless I didn't listen properly. I am Victoria, your advisor. I will be your guide through the world of Rome Total War. Follow my instructions and you will learn everything you need to know. To continue, left click Cool, the so we know how to dismiss her, which is probably going to be useful. This is the area around Rome. This is Rome, the eternal city of the Seven Hills, home of the Senate and the people of Rome. At this stage, there is no empire, just Rome, with the Senate ruling and a few great families such as yours vying for power. You play the Julii, one of Rome's great families. At this stage, this is your only army, and you own no cities. Your mission is to assist the Senate in extending the power of Rome. Later, much later, you may have ambitions to take control from the Senate and become emperor. An army of Gauls is approaching from the north, and the Senate have sent an army under Captain Decius to intercept them. He has requested your assistance. Normally, each faction makes its moves in turn, but I'll move your army for you to get us to the battle. Well, thank you very much. That's rather kind of you. So, it looks like we are killing some ghouls to start off with. Lovely. 
And it looks like we have the support of the Senate as well, which is good because it doesn't look like our army is very strong. So, are you going to give me any instructions or do you want me just to to do it? Battle oh. is about to commence. Get ready to defend Rome from the barbarian horde. Beautiful. Yes. Do I have to click anything? No, it does it for me. Lovely. Okay. So yeah, interesting start. Looks like we're going to have a battle against the Gauls. Um, fine, fine. It looks like the Senate army is a lot strong, because they're probably going to have to carry. But I imagine it's just like on easy difficulty, so... I, it it didn't, didn't let me choose a difficulty, but yeah, I would imagine it is on easy difficulty or something like that. Just to get started. Are they, General? I am Marcus, trusted centurion and military advisor to your family. I will watch your actions on the battlefield and show you how to command magnificent armies and crush your enemies for the glory of Rome. Now, let's take a look at the battlefield. As you enter a battlefield, your view starts by facing to the north with armies deploying according to the locations they occupied on the campaign map. Your army joined the battle from east of the river, so it starts here. The Senate army joined battle from the southwest of the bridge, so it starts here. The invading Gaul army started in the northwest, so it starts here. The Gauls are beginning an attack. Let's take a closer look at the action. This is the acting commander of the Senate's legions, Captain Decius. He's a junior member of the Senate's faction. Get it! Back! Looks like it's a bridge battle, so uh, much in our favour it is. Remember, the strength of a Roman army lies in its disciplined legions. They are the envy of the civilised world. Barbarian armies rely on brute force, strength of will, and an all-out charge to batter their enemies into submission. Once broken, they are easily crushed. The Senate has promised a reward to the soldiers who bring them the head of the Gaulish warlord, Dumnorix. Dumnorix? Not heard of that one before. Looks like they're charging with Skirmisher Warband, which probably isn't the best thing to do. I mean, they're literally all out charging. I don't think I've ever quite seen this, to be fair. I think this is a little bit exaggerated. Our front line is Welites? Really? It looks like neither army has summoned the will to engage just yet. Skirmishing could go on for a while. This is a good chance to show you how easy it is to command armies like these. We're about three miles away, so I don't think we're going to do this anything. This is your general, Gaius Julius. Your faction leader on the campaign map and commander in the field. He is the most important unit. His wisdom and courage give both strength and morale to the soldiers around him. Use him wisely and victory is certain. You can rotate your camera view by pushing your mouse cursor to the edges of the screen. Okay, you're talking very slowly. Yeah, we know this. On the ground and use your left or right cursor keys to rotate around the cursor. Your cursor keys move the camera left, right, forwards and backwards. Try this now. Beautiful. So, hopefully you guys do know the, the controls of camera movement. Tips for the future. You can use the mouse wheel or asterisk and forward slash to change the camera angle. The middle mouse button zooms you in and out of the action. Use plus and minus to change the camera view. To continue, left click on the advisor. Wait, plus or minus to change the camera view? Oh, okay, you can just zoom in and out like that. I used the mouse, but okay, fair enough. Yeah, hopefully you guys do know how to, like, the basic controls. They are pretty simple, to be honest. Our army, very, very good experience, which is cool, because we've only got three units. General's cavalry unit, left click on the unit card or left click on the actual unit. If you can't see your unit, double left click on the unit card to move your view to that unit. Beautiful. So we know this. When you're ready, right click on the area of the battlefield indicated. You may need to use your camera controls to view the while a selected unit is moving. You can use the movement toggle button to change your unit speed. You might want the camera to follow a selected unit automatically. If so, use the delete key. Your camera view will lock on the selected unit. Use the delete key to unlock the camera again. 
So yeah, that is something that some people won't know. You can use the delete key to follow certain things. But I just tend to use the double click, but you can you can double do that as well. Double click on the unit card indicated. These triarii are elite Roman spearmen. They are the backbone of a Roman army. You'll see that the camera pans directly to a unit if you double left click on it. If you use a single left click, it will select the unit card, but not change your view. Our maneuvering has attracted the attention of the enemy cavalry, and they're coming this way. <laughs> do you really want to do that? <laughs> Archers are vulnerable to cavalry attacks. Protect them by moving your triarii spearmen in front of them. I mean, the sensible thing would have been actually to move towards the bridge, but for some reason we were just messing around out here for ages. But yeah, okay, cool. We'll do what the game says. So I'm guessing they're going to charge straight into the spearmen like idiots. Unit spears are one of the best weapons against cavalry. To attack the cavalry, move your mouse over the barbarian cavalry unit. When the cursor becomes a sword, double right click to charge the barbarian scum. Let's get them, boys. Not the best way to use Triarii, to be honest, they're a more defensive unit. For some reason we are just straight up charging them, but I'm guessing it's fixed for us to win this. Bear in mind we've got gold experience. Sure don't let your troops chase fleeing enemy units unless all enemy units on the battlefield are routed. It will just tire your troops and leave your other forces vulnerable. Use the HALT button to stop a unit. Halt! Beautiful, so we've halted then, they're running off. Cool. What next, mate? Oh, some more lads are coming over. What have we got here? Archer Warband. <laughs> the tactics of the Gauls. Send one unit over at a time against gold experienced Triarii. Yeah, okay, lads. The enemy are now sending archers against us. Select your archers by left clicking oh. left clicking on them or their unit card. Now, right click to attack the indicated enemy archer unit. Make sure you don't march your own archers into any hand to hand fighting. Archers default to skirmish mode and make poor hand to hand soldiers. Okay, it actually wants me to use the archers to deal with the um, now select your archers, but whatever. Unit and then double right click on the enemy archers to cut them down. Always remember, archers are vulnerable to cavalry attacks. Yeah, it, I, I just got overexcited and used my triarii to deal with them, but whatever. Finish dealing with these barbarians. When they run away, get ready to cross the bridge and attack the left wing of the enemy army. Don't bother chasing the routing units, as it will tire your troops. Okay. You can well, use the halt button to stop a unit. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do that. So, stop chasing them, lads. The, the game is controlling the camera for me, which is, oh, it's actually following the arrows of the. Um, Thing. Okay, so let's get across the bridge then. Oh, <laughs> I did it automatically. When giving them orders, units acting together can be more effective than on their own. Use Control A to select all your units. You can use the return key to deselect units. I'm actually learning something there. I don't normally use the keyboard a lot. I just use everything Another with the mouse. Of unit selection is to left click on the terrain near a unit, drag the selection yep. box around a group of your units, release the mouse button. That's you that's what I prefer to do, it's now. what I did just then. So I think we're ready to move across the bridge, let's get along with this. The game is now paused. You can do this at any time during a battle by clicking on the pause button or by pressing P on your keyboard. While paused, you can still move the camera and give units your orders. You can use the game speed buttons next to the pause button if there is a lull in the fighting, or you want to speed up a battle you are winning. Don't use them in this battle, or you will miss important information. Okay, mate. Remember, Don't tell me what to do. To continue, you must left-click on the play button. The barbarians have noticed that we are... Oh, he stopped talking. I think I might have accidentally interrupted him. He, basically, they're coming over, I think, it, is what he was saying. Sorry, I'd accidentally interrupted him then. Didn't mean to. We'll get the Triarii... Now you're ready to attack the enemy. Move your Triarii spearmen to the left flank of the enemy. Use your archers and general as close support. Well, they're charging with this unit of skirmishers, so let's just deal with them nice and quick. 
I mean, skirmishes against tri uh, Triari, I no, no fight. In fact, in is, let's stop wasting the um, arrows, the archers. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm taking control myself. Screw this. <laughs> okay, they actually might get a few hits on my Triari. I forgot they actually can throw javelins, but they literally killed none of us. So let's just get across the bridge and kill them. Around on the battlefield, it is a good idea to walk them unless they are either mounted or close to the enemy. Right, so we're just getting these skirmishes down. Bridge in battle, it is best for units to cross as fast as they can. Troops can be vulnerable to enemy attack during a crossing. My goodness, these skirmishes are still eager. What difficulty is this on? <laughs> We've got gold experienced Triarii versus skirmishes, and they're still eager, and they've got 11 of them left. <laughs> this is hilarious. They've, they've stuck me straight on very hard, very hard difficulty. Blimey. <laughs> they're not routing. I think maybe it's because I'm not doing what they wanted me to do. The game wanted me to do, rather. So they're just automatically not going to route, maybe? I don't know. Let's just get the Triarii here nice and quick. And then get a cavalry charge, maybe. But blimey, they, they're not messing around. I rate this. Right, so let's just get the general charging in, screw it. Get the general in the back, Triario in the front, there's no way that they're not gonna die. I would hope so anyway, this is getting a bit ridiculous now. Now get across that river and kill the remaining enemy. Well yeah, there's still bloody ones over here that are still eager, and there's two of them. <laughs> like what? Okay, well let's just get across this stupid bridge then. And I don't know why we're doing everything. We've got three units. There's a whole bloody Senate army over there. Why can't they do it? I mean, there's swordsmen over there. Are we really going to have to carry the Senate like this? We're just a vassal of the Senate, damn it. Nope, they're charging towards the Senate. And you the know what? They can deal with it. Full -scale attack. Hurry. No, I don't need to hurry. They're, they're sorting it out. No, they're just going to charge their Equites straight into swordsmen. Okay, maybe we do need to help them. They're more stupid than I am. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, why won't we come over and help? In fact, let's just kill this unit of skirmisher warbands. We'll get you two coming over, dealing with the skirmishers. You can fire on this unit of swordsmen, help out the, the Senate, which are messing around. Yeah, look, these equities broke. <laughs> this is a tutorial. This is meant to be showing me what to do, not what not to do. Blimey. Senate are not messing around. Well, actually, they are messing around. What am I talking about? Well, let's just get up on the rear of them and surround them. They should die pretty soon. Right, this unit seems to be engaged with a unit of Astartes. If we get a good charge in from the general, they shouldn't be eager anymore. We'll get you firing in on them and the Triarii. Again, another unit of um, Senate broke. In fact, the Senate are, the Senate are low-key losing this. Let's just get a good charge in. Thank goodness I'm around. I'm carrying the Senate. Right, there's a mess going on over there. General, you come over and sort that out. Triarii get in the back of those swordsmen. Archers, why don't you just arch? No, 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 it's the back of them. That's not what I told you to do, is it? It's the back of them. Okay, just complete surround that unit. We've got a unit of warband over there. I think the, the Roman general's about to die. Idiot. He's a complete idiot. And thank goodness I'm here. Literally, I've carried the Senate army. Blimey. Flipping hell. Um, let's just kill their general, Dumb Norix, or whatever his name is. <laughs> let's just kill him. Get the Triarii on him as well. Spearman against the general. We should be okay. Thank goodness my general's good as well. He's barely taken any losses. Velitez at the back. I mean, again, why are they charging with Velitez? Right. Somebody's dead. Yeah. Dumb Norix. So, well, we carried then. We bought 106 men. The Senate bought 430. And we got way more kills than they did. Oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Well anyway, we won. That's the good thing, I suppose. Victory! Now you've learnt the basics of the battlefield, I'm going to show you how to play on the campaign map. Battles last just a day, but building an empire takes time. On the campaign map, time is divided into turns, each lasting six months. What I've just noticed, by the way, is the settlements and where the factions are, they've actually changed for the campaign. So for example, Ancona, that's not in the game. That definitely isn't, and it sure as hell isn't Scipii. The Scipii are down here in the uh, base game, so that's quite interesting. They've actually changed the settlements up a little bit, which is uh, cool to see. Also, has our army got stronger? I swear it has. Yeah, we've suddenly got all these men. But anyway, what do you want me to do then? 
You've not given me any instructions. Cool, so we got that. Is she going to tell me what to do? Do you want me to end the turn? Is that what you were... Let's end the turn. Oh, maybe it literally wants me to expand. I don't know. If you army, you will see that the Senate has rewarded you with some military units. These will go some way to helping you expand your power. You have also received a special payment to help pay for the campaign you have just fought. So, they, well, they, they didn't just give me the some special units. The controls on the oh. campaign map are similar to the battlefield. Left-click selects things, and right-click moves them. If you want to look around the map, use the up, down, left, and right cursor keys, or just push your mouse cursor to the edges of the screen. Double-clicking on most things opens up a scroll with more details. The first time you see any scroll, I'll tell you what it's all about, but if you forget, you can always click on the question mark in the top right of a scroll. Don't do this now, as I have some more important things to tell you. Oh, more telling you what to, to do again. Moving. Select the army indicated by using the left mouse button. And you have selected your army. You'll notice that as soon as you do this, the panel at the bottom of the screen fills with unit cards. Your general, Gaius Julius, gets a card of his own for him and his bodyguard. Use right click to move all your units to the edge of the green movement area. Try moving where the arrow is pointing. The edge of the green area is the furthest point you can move to from your current position in one turn. Selecting an area beyond this will require more than one turn of movement. So we're going to move over here. Lady, are you telling me that's not exactly where the arrow's pointing, okay? Because that is exactly where it is. Remember, when moving your armies around the map, it is best to do so in force. Moving your forces around in very small armies or as individual units leaves them very vulnerable to attack. Keep your units grouped together. So the this is obviously the set. The oh. gives details on whatever you have selected and has buttons that bring up a variety of scrolls. You may also have noticed that when you hold the mouse pointer over things, a handy tooltip pops up telling you what it is. You can look at these later by yourself in more detail, but for now, I'll explain what each button does. This is your overview of the world. It allows you to see territories owned by factions you have contact with at a glance. It also shows your own territories. At present, there is little to show, but I'm confident it will get busy later on. This displays your currently selected character or settlement. From here, you can cycle through all your characters, armies, and settlements with the arrows to the side. Open an information scroll for a selected character or settlement by double left-clicking on the related item on the campaign map. This is just like real life. Women Control keep interrupting me. There you go. More than just a strong sword arm and a treasury full of cash. From here, you can examine the state of your faction. Keep track of your heirs and make policy decisions. If you open this scroll, you can use the tabs you will see at the top to examine information about the Senate, diplomacy, your financial status, and other faction information. This shows the current season and lets you know if you are going to be fighting in summer or winter. This is important when you are fighting in the frozen north or in the arid deserts where bad weather can win or lose a battle. This is the end turn button. When you decide you have completed all your actions for a turn, you can click on this to advance the game. You have already moved your army, so now would be a good time to end the turn. Right, so what I was saying it before I was... new campaign turn. You will see that the money in your treasury is going down. In fact, you are borrowing from money lenders. This is because you are paying wages to your army but have no income. You will need to capture a settlement to give you an income. Money is essential to build settlements or troops. The circle button on the control panel is where you can see a summary of your empire's income and expenditure for the turn. At the moment, you have no empire, so there's not much to see there other than the ongoing expense of maintaining your army. From time to time, you will see a small picture slide down the left side of your screen. These are messages detailing important events that have occurred, it is important to read them as and when they appear. You can left-click on a message to open it. Right-click will dismiss it. You might notice a button in the bottom left corner of these scrolls. This will focus your view on the subject of the message. The Senate mission to capture Taquinii gives you a chance to earn a reward from the Senate and to gain a settlement which will give you an income. 
It's the first step towards building an empire and should solve your money problem. To attack or siege a settlement, left click on the army you want to attack with and then right click on the target settlement. Depending on how far you are from Tarquinii, it may take you more than one turn to get there. If you can't get there in one turn, hit end turn after you have moved and repeat until you have reached your target. Right, so what I was going to say before I got interrupted about 50 times was this seems like it is set before the events of the base game of Rome Total War because I think, doesn't the base game start in 270 BC? So this is like a bit before and also there's Greeks on the Italian mainland so that would kind of make sense. Um, so it wants us to go and attack Tarquinii, which is fine. I think we are pretty much ready to end the turn. There's not really a huge amount to elaborate on. We literally have no settlements of our own, which is odd because in the real game you would you would be dead if that was the case. Um, so yeah, so Scipii seem to own Ancona, and then we can't really see the rest, which is kind of a shame. It'd be interesting to see what the other settlements look like, because it seems like they've changed it a little bit. But anyway, I think we should end the turn and see what goes on. Okay, so end of turn report. We're actually losing money. And then faction announcements. Coming of age, Secundus Julius, and he's got married, and he's got a tutor, and he's got an oracle. Oh no, sorry, it's someone different. But Secundus Julius having a bit of a busy time. So the game wants us to go... Right click to move your army to any part of the highlighted area. Attack by right-clicking on a rival's army or settlement. Merge with a friendly army by moving to the same spot. Embark on a fleet at a coast by moving onto it. Thank you. Um, it wants us to go and attack Tarquinii. Now, how strong is Tarquinii looking? It, it, there's quite a few troops. I mean, maybe we should pick up... Oh, we can't. I was going to say, maybe we should pick up some mercenaries. Physically can't afford them. This guy is good, by the way. Flipping hell. Yeah, Gaius Julius. Yeah, I mean, obviously he would be good. But <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, right. Let's, let's go for it. Not going to tell me anything about this? Okay. Well, um, if you don't know, this is where you... Siege, so you can have siege equipment here. You can build rams, which is pretty obvious what they do. They ram the doors down, ladders, siege towers, and sat points. I can do a video on these if you want me to actually elaborate in more detail. And then you can lift the siege, assault, which we can do now for some reason. I don't know if they don't have walls. They don't have walls, or maybe, I don't know. But we can technically assault them now, or we can just maintain the siege. Let's assault them now. Why not? Because we need the money. So, here we go. It, I'm surprised it's not telling me anything it should really be telling me and like it's giving me pointless information and it's not telling me how to attack I'll explain because the game isn't doing so so balance of power this shows you how likely you are to win a battle so our army is four times as strong as this geezer's army this is the Greek army we're fighting this is our army guys Julius you can see how many men are on each side you can either fight the battle manually like we just did in the previous battle you can fight it automatically if you click that the battle will end now and the computer will decide who wins based mostly off the strength ratio but not always so be careful on that or you can withdraw i think we're ready to fight the battle you can right click on the general here to see what his army is this scroll shows you the known details of an allied neutral or enemy character his skills retainers character traits and job if he is a general or admiral any intelligence on the composition of his army or fleet is displayed here there you go she said it all so i think we are indeed ready to attack tarquinii i have no friend to fear this many men know about me but I do know that fear can rob a man of his dignity and his honor. At this moment, in the enemy ranks, fear is doing its work. Soon we will do ours. Over there stands the Greek army. They make a fine show and are worthy enemies. They stand alone. No friend has come to this place to die for them. Does this not say something about their honor? They're standing among nations? We are the largest army our people have in the field. They expect great things of us as a result. And we are the men to do great things. Nothing else is worth doing. They think their walls are enough to stop us. They should think... <laughs> Sorry, just looking at those triarii. <laughs> They're really waving their spears around. They should be a bit more careful. <laughs> I bet they would have stabbed like five of their friends. If I was holding a spear, I'd be a lot more careful than these guys are being. That's hilarious. When I set my heart on an attack, I do 
so knowing that I will win, that my men will win, that victory is within reach. All we need to do is stretch out and grasp the foe firmly by the throat. Some of us will soon lie dead. The rest will drink to their memory, but as always, we Romans will fight with honor! <laughs> oh, that just makes me laugh. Okay, so here we are. That was the pre-battle speech, so start deployment. Remember, the goal here is to capture the settlement, not destroy it. Buildings destroyed on the battlefield will also be destroyed on the campaign map. To capture the settlement, either kill or rout the entire enemy army, or reach the central plaza and hold it. Cool, and it will probably tell us in a second that the reason we could attack the settlement now is because actually we have onagers which will destroy the walls. So these things are basically like they sort of sling things over and attack the walls. So that's probably why we can do that. I didn't actually set out my army, I didn't really think about what I was doing then. So, well, either way, we need to get the onagers to attack the walls, which they can do from here. So let's get you guys doing that, please. And they're going to break the walls down so we can get inside the city. So we'll speed it up, and you can see they are doing their thing, and there we go, gates are open. By your battering ram. You have the advantage. Get some men through the breach quickly before the enemy can defend it. Screw it, let's get some Greeks down with the onagers. In fact, let's not do that, to be honest. Let's just get some lads in the city. So, we've got lots of Hastati and Prinkipes, so let's just bring them forward nice and quickly. They can throw their peeler, which is basically like some javelins that they've got before charging into the city. We can also bring the Welites over. They basically are javelin men, but they're not as good in the melee as the Hastati and Prinkipes. And they can come over and help as well. And you know what? Let's bring the Triarii forward as well. And you know what? Let's bring the Generals forward. In fact, screw it. Let's bring everyone forward, apart from the Onagers. So here we are. And we've got pretty trash units, to be honest. Clear away enemy missile infantry is a direct cavalry charge. However, be wary of them retreating to difficult terrain for your cavalry to manage. Or to where there are friendly units that could threaten you. Right, so I'm just going to let the Welletes do fire over the walls, get a few hits on them. Yeah, the general, uh, sorry, the, this geezer suggested a cavalry charge, but the thing is they've got hoplites just over there. Not a good idea for cavalry to be charging into spearmen, so Welletes don't get inside the city, just stay around here. Um, what we've got here then, we've got militia cavalry and we've got archers and militia hoplites. I think it's about time we get our strong infantry inside the city. They can start throwing their peeler. You guys can be on fire at will as well. There you go. For the first time. This toggles fire at will on and off for the selected troops. Toggle fire at will off if you wish to preserve ammunition. There you go, he said it. So, you guys start Our firing on... Have captured the walls! Now is the yep. time to press on and capture this place! So they, these guys are now going to fire their peeler in. In fact, they're just going to literally charge the peasants. Well, whatever. Under attack from an enemy missile unit. You are currently using close formation. It is more difficult to hit a loosely spaced formation than a tightly packed one. Change to a loose formation by left clicking on the button to the right of the review panel. Left click the show me how button to see how to change formation. You just saw me click it then. It was that button there. Loose and tight formation. What have we got over here? We got some rubbish troops. Just get some Welletes firing in on them from over the walls. This isn't normally how I'd fight a battle, by the way, just by charging in. But to be honest, there's there's no way we're going to lose. And also, it, this is not a tutorial on how to fight in city streets. This is just me messing around, basically. So yeah, get the Triarii in. Just charge in. You can make them break off just by right-clicking on a point behind them. Make sure you click well back though, or the unit will stop too close to the enemy. This can be a useful trick if your men are faster than the enemies. Otherwise... Oh, sorry, I um, accidentally got rid of what he was saying. I mean, this, what is difficult is this on? These hoplites eventually break. Let's start moving towards the plaza. Yeah, I haven't really got the time to be messing around with troops like this. Let's just get straight onto the plaza, which is over there. It's the big square bit in the middle with the flag on it. Take the plaza, hold it, and you've got the city, basically. So that's what you want to be doing. 
So we're going to run towards the plaza now. There's a bit of a cavalry charge over here. In fact, they could kill some of our Welleters. Let's get our generals in and kill. That way, they can brace themselves against the impact and will take fewer losses. There you go. And yeah, we're going to kill their general, hopefully. Gaius Julius is going to kill their general, who is going down very, very quickly. You guys just make your way to the plaza. We've got some hoplites over there. Again, cavalry, don't charge hoplites. Send help or withdraw him from combat. If he is killed, your army may panic and run. He's fine. Chill out. He's just nearly killed their general. In fact, their general is about to die in a minute. So just, yeah, all rush to the plaza. There we go. That geezer, that geezer stabbed their general. So, Admetos of Drachium is now dead. Lovely. Right, so we can get these units to just charge the militia hotplines. For engaging and holding the enemy in place while you go round their side or rear. But the lower the troop quality, the less time you have before they break. Sorry, I got rid of him again. He was talking for too long. As I say, this is not normally how I would fight a battle. In fact, we've done this quite badly. We've taken way too many losses by just literally charging in. But you know what? It's cool. I mean, how are they ego? I really am interested to see what difficulty this is on because... I reckon it's on quite a high difficulty, which I credit the game for. A lot of other games would just put you straight on easy difficulty, and, you know, that would be that. But there we go. Anyway, you guys, get onto the plaza. Get these mission hoplites down, please. We'll speed up a little bit. Oh, I think my general might have charged into the hoplites. Bad idea. General, go over there, please. Both of you, both of you cavalrymen. Get away from the militia hoplites, who are indeed wavering. So if you guys go into the front of them, and then the general goes into the back, where their spears are pointed that way, then that could be quite good. But we kind of need our infantry to hurry the hell up, please. Right, let's get the generals to charge into the back. Attacking spearmen from behind is the single best way to kill them with cavalry. But always keep an eye out for enemy troops supporting the spearmen. Left click the show me how button to zoom to your unit. There we go. So it it complimented me over my excellent charge into the back of the hot flights. Well, thank you very much, game. That is much appreciated. So we are just grinding them down. There are a few Greek units still in the plaza, but we we there are a few units around. We should be able to deal with them. Uh, you guys just go over and deal with those militia hot flights which are over there. You guys just go and deal with those hot flights or whatever they are. You just take down those archers, and I think that's pretty much it. We have taken the city, not in the most efficient fashion, which is difficult to say by the way, but. That's fine. We've taken the plaza. This counter, I'll actually slow it down a little bit. This counter, if it gets down to two minutes and there's no Greeks in the plaza, then you win the battle. Um, but if any Greeks now went on the plaza, they would retake it automatically, even if we're on it. There's a few Greeks over there talking about it, so let's get some lads over there just to kill with them as well. And I think once we kill those Peltas, the battle should be over because we've killed all the opposition. So, they charged in. Beautiful victory. We'll end the battle there. Clear victory. Pretty solid victory. We uh, never thought anything else was going to happen. So, that means we will take the city now, which is Tarquinii, I think. If I remember cor uh, correctly, I think it's Tarquinii. So, yeah. We'll see that in a second. Victory! During a siege, it is a good idea to build siege equipment to breach the enemy walls. You will have a number of build points available for siege equipment. Why are you telling me this after I've taken the settlement? You will not be able to assault a settlement until you have at least one siege weapon. Once you are ready to assault the settlement, use the assault button. Okay, you're a little bit slow. We've actually taken the settlement already, so a bit of redundant information. I will now explain the actual relevant information, which is once you've captured a settlement, you can see there, capture settlement, Tarquinii, you have three options. You have the option to occupy the settlement, enslave, this is not currently an option, I'll explain why in a minute, and exterminate. So in each settlement, there is a population of citizens inside the settlement. So if you occupy the settlement, you will gain a bit of money from looting. But everyone in the population will now be occupied by the Romans, but they're all going to stay inside the city. If you enslave the populace, half of the city's population stays inside the city. The other half is enslaved and sent out to various other settlements. They are set out to settlements with a general inside. 
okay? So they are distributed evenly amongst all your other settlements with generals inside. I hope that makes sense. The reason we can't enslave the populace is, one, there's not enough population to enslave, but two, we actually don't currently have any other settlements. There is no one else to enslave elsewhere because we can't physically send anyone anywhere. There's nowhere to send them to. So you have to either occupy or you can exterminate them. You kill a lot of the population so it goes down massively. You get money from doing that. Um, but the population is a lot lower than obviously if you'd occupied them because you're killing them So we will occupy the settlement and get 569 denarii from looting now would be a good time to learn how to control the development of your settlements By selecting and constructing the correct buildings you can attract more people to tax Create a bigger pool of recruits and gain access to better units Left click on the construction button to begin building improvements in this settlement Okay, so I've clicked to keep that. settlement safe and to support your troops, you need to improve Taquinii's public order rating and your income. To do this, you must one, build a shrine to Jupiter to help keep the population happy. Two, build better roads to increase trade and troop movement speeds. Three, build at least four units of town watch to act as garrison. Although you will need to spend a few turns. Oh, sorry, I accidentally interrupted Manual you. Manual recruitment can only take place when a governor is present in a settlement. If there is no permanent governor in place, you may wish to queue up units for training. Left click on a unit to add it to the recruitment queue and again to remove it. You can change the order of training by left clicking and dragging unit icons in the queue. You will not be able to train any units if there are too few men in the settlement to recruit. <laughs> Okay, so I accidentally interrupted her. Basically, what she was saying is construction. We'll go over that quickly. Um, you have a selection of buildings here. They suggested a temple for public order and roads for um, trade. So you can only construct one at a time. So they will construct this shrine to Jupiter, which will take one turn, it says there. And then afterwards, it will construct the paved roads, which will take three turns to construct. You can't see that yet because it's not ready to be constructed yet. But you can't construct two buildings at the same time. But you can queue them up. So you can queue several buildings. Once this one is done, then we'll move on to the paved roads automatically. Like so, basically. That's what she was about to explain. Unfortunately, I interrupted her. Same with the recruitment. You can recruit one unit at a time. So you can recruit one unit of Town Watch. And then that will take one turn. And then you can recruit another unit of Town Watch. But it will take one turn afterwards. So for the two of them, it will take two turns. But you'll get this one unit in the next turn if that makes any sense so it's a queue system basically by the way she said recruit four units of town watch would not recommend that town watch are not very good instead recruit her starty but anyway i'll do what she told me to because i i just will this is the button you click for recruiting armies no faction can survive without armies and this is where you build them you need to have the money and a population to recruit from of course this button becomes the mercenary hire button when you have an army outside of a settlement. Mercenaries are expensive, but can be useful in emergencies when troops are needed immediately. Okay, so, yeah, if you want to recruit troops, well you can just click you on that. Free the Taquinii from tyranny. The Senate of Rome has voted to allow full citizenship to the Taquinii. You must now develop the settlement and put business in order. This will take less time if you do not enslave or exterminate a settlement. Okay, so I explained that earlier, yeah. Um, so I'll show you how to create mercenaries. So you can recruit um, inside Tarquinii, but also if you get a general, it has to be a general outside of the city. So we'll just move Gaius Julius outside the city for the moment. You will see that this, sorry, if we select him, this button will become lit up. And that is because you can re recruit mercenaries. Now, we can only recruit one unit of mercenaries at the moment because there's only one available. This will refresh over time. There won't always be mercenaries available for hire. So if you want to recruit him, you just click on him. He goes down there and you can buy him instantly. But let's say that there were like five mercenary units for hire. There's not a queue system for mercenaries. So you can buy five units of mercenaries at once and you'll get them immediately. Unlike in the city where you can only recruit one unit at a time. So if you click on him and then... Hire all queued units. This scroll shows you details of the given general in your faction. The small panel at the top shows his rank, name, and current skill levels. Beneath are listed his retinue, traits, and details of any mercenaries that are available for hire at the time. There you go. And yeah, you can now see that unit of Sam Knight mercenaries has been added to his army. Beautiful. So we'll move him back inside Tarquin anyway. Not sure exactly what it wants me to do now, to be honest. So, if we've been granted the gift of 10,000 denarii, well, that's very, that's very, very generous, in fact. So, I think we'll just end the turn because she's not really saying anything else.
You have constructed a shrine to Jupiter. This will help increase Taquinia's loyalty to Rome. Make sure you upgrade your barracks in order to allow recruitment of units. This will allow you to move existing troops out of Taquinia and onto more important duties. Beautiful. So, just show you what these things mean. That's the money. That's the happiness. So it's with green happiness. So it's a lot of public order. Um, the population growing up, recruitment and construction. So that's pretty simple to be honest. So we'll double click on Tarquinii. That brings up all the information for the place. You see now that the temple is no longer being constructed because it has been constructed. It's down here. And now it's going automatically onto the roads, which will take three turns. Um, so recruitment, it now wants us to... construction can only take place when a governor is present in the settlement. If there is no permanent governor in place, you may wish to queue up buildings for construction. Left click on a building's picture to add it to the construction queue and again to remove it. You can move buildings in the queue to change construction order by dragging and dropping within the queue. Right click on a building's picture to view its description. I don't think that's true. It says manual construction can only take place when a governor is present. I don't think that's... I think that's incorrect. In fact, that definitely is incorrect. I, I'm not sure what that's about. But anyway, if you want to get information on these buildings, right click and it shows you that the walls provide extra wall defences, which is pretty flipping obvious, but whatever. So, what does it want us to do now then? End of turn report. This shows you basically all the finances if you're really interested in see where your income and expenditure is. We have construction. This shows you what you've constructed. So we've constructed a shrine to Jupiter in Tarquinii. And then recruitment, we have constructed a unit of town watch in Tarquinii. So not exactly sure what I'm meant to do now. Does it want me to move the army out? Is the tutorial finished? You know what? It wants me to recruit some, uh, construct some barracks. So let's just get a practice range in and then the turn. Because I don't know what it wants me to do, to be honest. So, another end of term report. Coming of age, we've got a new general, Canaius Julius. Where is he? If you click on here, you can see where he is. He is in Tarquinii, so we now have three generals in Tarquinii. Cool. And then you can see the unit recruitment, which is another unit of Town Watch. I'm honestly not sure what the game wants me to do, because it's not really giving me much in terms of construction. So, um, instruction. Sorry. So let's just move this army out, move up north, and see if there's a settlement that we can take. How about that? So we're going to select all these units, select all the units that we want to bring along. We'll bring along you guys. We'll bring along you and you. Move along up north. I don't know what we're meant to do, to be honest. I mean, there's probably a settlement up here somewhere. So let's just see if we can go and take that. We'll end the turn again because we've run out of movement points. And that's the end of turn report. Yeah, this is odd. I don't know what it wants me to do, to be honest. There's some mercenaries. So you know what? We'll pick up another unit of Sam Knights. Lovely. And we'll just continue moving up north. You have selected a target outside the green highlighted area. This means your character cannot reach his target this turn. Provided that an enemy does not block his path, your character will continue on his journey next turn. Red paths indicate the part of the journey that will take place in the next turn. Blue paths the turn after, yellow paths the turn after that, and so on. Not possible, sir. Yep, so you see what she's saying there? If you want to do that, then there you go. More mercenaries, oh, more mercenaries are available, so let's just pick up some Barbarian Cavalry mercenaries and end the turn again. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm meant to do here, there's not much instructions. Road. Roads are very useful for getting troops from A to B quickly, and also for increasing trade between cities. The better your roads, the more trade you will generate from the surrounding area. More mercenaries, so we'll pick up these guys, because why not? Um, so, in a term report, we know about that already. Another coming of age, so Decius Julius is now a general. And constructions. Let's just continue moving up north. And there we go. We found another settlement. Ravenna. A Gaelic capital. So yeah, let's go and take that. Why not? The Senate are impressed with your progress. You must now take the Samnite city of Bovianum in the southeast. The Samnites have insulted the authority and dignity of Rome by supporting the Etruscan tyrant of Taquinii in his resistance to Rome. They seem to prefer the company of Gauls and Greeks to the honest and upright people of Rome. Okay, so to we can have a look. units out of a city, left click on the city. Then left click on the unit or agent in the review panel you wish to move out of the city. Hold down the control key when selecting more than one unit to be moved. Once you have selected all the required units, right click on a destination outside the city. 
Okay, so I've been far too impatient, basically, and I've already moved out of the city, and I've moved in the wrong direction because I didn't know where I was meant to be moving to. So it actually wants me to go towards here, a rebel Samnite settlement, which, unfortunately, I decided to move in the complete opposite direction because I was an impatient bastard, which is what I am. So I guess we're moving over here then, so we're going the other direction, which is going to take us ages to get there, probably about a solid seven or eight turns. So, we've set out the, the movement, we will keep moving in that direction, and yes, um... You now have all the basics you need to manage a successful faction. Your only limits are your own ability and the whims of fate. You may wish to continue this campaign and steer your faction to dominance in Italy. You will still receive advice from time to time. Or you may want to move on to the Imperial campaign. As ever, the choice is yours. Roma Invicta. Okay, yeah, so I think this is actually the end of the tutorial. She will give me the odd hint, but if you turn on, um, if you, in the options, if you turn on, um, advice anyway, um, it'll give you advice throughout the game as you progress, even if you play the base game and not this. So I'm actually going to end it here because there's no real point. Basically, you could go and take, um, this Bovianum or whatever it's called and Ravenra up there. But there's not a lot of point because it doesn't. This isn't. This isn't the base game. The base game is different. The base game you've got to conquer the whole of Europe and a bit of Africa and a bit of the Middle East as well. So this is like a sort of smaller version of what the real game is like. But there's no point playing this whole thing. I think you've pretty much got the idea. We took Tarquinii. You know, there's not a huge amount more advice to give. I don't think anyway. So I mean, tell me if I've missed out anything hugely vital. But there we go. So I think I'm going to end this episode here. Um, you know, it was cool doing the prologue. I learned a little bit about the prologue, at least, that, you know, I never knew about the settlements of Ancona and Bovianum, because they're not in the base game. But, yeah, I thought this would be a fun thing to do. And if you're new to Rome Total War, it's a good, it's a good solid way to get started. Yeah, it's quite slow-paced, but it's a good solid way to get started. Or, of course, you could just watch my videos and get an expert at it. So, you know, whatever you want to do. Anyway, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with more videos very, very soon, and I'll see you around. Left click on graphics options to add or remove graphical effects and change the resolution of the campaign map and battlefields. Left click on sound options to change sound effects and music levels. Load or save a campaign or exit to the main front end menus by left clicking the appropriate buttons. Flipping hell, she won't shut up, will she? She, she doesn't want me to go. Well, screw you.